Welcome back to the Wild Podcast. I am your host, Jeffrey Zamore. I am so excited to have another conversation with you guys. And for those who are new to the channel, please make sure that you like, subscribe, hit that alert button so that you will always stay up to date on all the new episodes. Also, please do not forget to check out the Words of Wisdom Prayer YouTube channel. It's a new YouTube channel that I started about maybe about a month and a half ago now, something around that time. Um, but this is a channel that's dedicated to prayers. And I just dropped the prayer on sin, um, a way for you to, if you're struggling with sin and, and trying to figure out a way on how to repent when it comes to any sinful things that you've been doing or maybe a lifestyle that you've been living that you're just not very happy about and you're trying to figure out how to pray, go ahead and listen to that prayer and check it out. But I do appreciate you guys for always tuning in and locking in and just to have a join me on another conversation. So the last episode, I had a conversation regarding sin and and it was a really, I believe it was a great episode. And it was an episode where I was able to talk about how expensive sin is and that you can choose your sin, but you cannot choose your consequences. And we all struggle in the area of sin, but I felt that it would be important to continue on the conversation, but not in the sense of talking about sin, I mean, still going to talk about sin, but really more in a sense of how do I get out of sin? And one of the more powerful ways and best ways is through prayer, through fasting, through deliverance. We all fall short of the glory of God. None of us is perfect. From the time that we've entered into this world, we were born into sin. So we struggle with it. I struggle with it every single day. And sometimes people think when they think of sin, they're thinking of Things such as murder, they're thinking of lust, they're thinking, you know, some of these big, big sinful ways that, you know, quite often, if we're honest, that the church tends to talk about, but they forget to talk about pride. They forget to talk about ego. They forget to talk about jealousy, not all churches, but, you know, some. And these are things that God also looks at as well, because why it conditions our heart. And so if we're not careful, if we're very envious, or if we have jealousy, if we have unforgiveness, unforgiveness is a sin because God calls us to forgive those, forgive those who have hurt us, forgive those who has offended us. Why? Because he does the same thing for us. And so if we're not careful, that can harvest some deep, deep hatred in our heart. And God wants us to remove that. One thing that I always do when I pray or I try to do when I pray to be honest, is to ask God to reveal anything that I'm harvesting in my heart that I'm not aware of, that I'm not aware of, that I'm harvesting, that could be very detrimental because it's like a seed that grows. And when it grows and grows and grows, what it can do is by the time it blossoms, it blossoms into a bad fruit. And the next minute, you know that you're taking out your anger, maybe your frustration, whatever it is that you're taking out, you're taking out on your spouse, your partner, your kids, your coworker, your friends, or you see that that something traumatic that has happened to you in your past that you've never healed from, that you've held on to, resentment. Resentment is a very, very big thing. Bitterness, it's a very huge thing. Resentment and bitterness can destroy marriages. It can destroy friendships. It could destroy relationships with your family because we harvest those things. We harvest those bad things seeds and we allow it to grow and that's one thing that we need to get rid of that's one of the one things that we need to destroy disobedience disobedience is another thing you know when god calls us to do something god gives us instructions and we decide to we want to do it in our own way that's considered disobedience that's considered rebellion and that's something we got to be careful of. Um, I believe it's just from first Samuel where um, in first Samuel, it talks about Samuel tells Saul that because of his rebellion, it is God looks at it as equivalent to being like witchcraft. So it's very, very important. God puts that in the same category. Being rebellious towards God is equivalent to witchcraft. And so if we're struggling in any of those areas, which again, we all 
fall short of the glory of God. We all sin. I sin every single day. We all do. There's not one person who is listening, who's watching, or who has walked this earth besides Jesus that has not committed a sin. So there are ways for us to be able to combat and to be able to battle that. Battle that. And one of the ways for us to be able to do that is praying, spending time with the Lord. The more we pray and the more we're in tune into prayer and developing a very strong prayer life, becoming a prayer warrior, this helps us combat sin because then now we are allowing, we're taking the prayers that we're doing, which is basically equivalent to having a conversation with God. And if we're honest and we're humble and we're sincere with our prayers, one, we're going to ask for forgiveness. We're going to repent on anything that we, that we may have done. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us through that prayer. And God's going to cleanse us from those sins. The Bible says that God forgives our sins as far as the East, as far as the West. But that requires us to repent. God is not just going to forgive the sin if we don't confess. We have to confess, which means we have to speak and say whatever the sin is. And the reason why sin is so important and why it's so important for us to do this, because like I talked about in the last episode, there are consequences for our sins. We can choose our sin, but we cannot choose the consequences. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 18, it states, uh, let me actually bring it up here. Uh, It says that the Lord is slow to anger and filled with unfailing love, forgiven every kind of sin and rebellion. But he does not excuse the guilty. He lays the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations. And so that's important. So here the Bible clearly states, and this is Moses speaking to Israel. This is after Israel was freed from Egypt. And then now they're in the wilderness. But there's this rebellion that's taking place within the people of Israel, because now they they want to go back to Egypt They're not really liking what God is instructing them to do. Um, So they're going against Moses. They're going against Joshua. It's become this whole big ordeal. So God gives them that reminder that your sins, not only that it's going to affect you, it's easily going to affect the third and fourth generation. So which means it's going to affect your kids. It's going to affect your kids' kids and your kids' kids. How often do we hear the, the, the phrase generational curse? And we often see when we look at our bloodline and we see that, hey, my grandmother was a certain way or my grandfather a certain way, my great, great grandfather a certain way. And then I've become that certain way. That's generational curse. That's the sins that's following. We can see poverty. So sometimes you can look at a family tree and you see how, for an example, let's say you had somebody who is. They grew up in the welfare system. And again, I'm not knocking or trying to offend anybody who grew up in the welfare system, but we can see where it sometimes it becomes a generational thing and something that is taught. It's the sin that continues to follow. You can even see where, Hey, somebody says like, I grew up seeing my father abuse my mom. And then you look deeper into it. You see the father who is an abusive or even let's say even an alcoholic, when he looks at his father, the same thing. You see his grandfather, the same thing. So it, it becomes a trait and you don't have to be taught this. It just gets attached to your bloodline. And so that's why it's important to go into prayer, but not only prayer, sometimes it actually requires fasting. Fasting is something that we hear a lot as believers to do. Even in the, in the modern world, people will fast. People will fast to lose weight, to shed some pounds, to try to get that summer body. You know, dads, you know, they, we do it sometimes to get rid of that dad bod. So, you know, when the summertime hits, I know that's what I'm trying to do <laughs> this summer. I, I, I have a bet with my daughter, actually, that by July, which is her birthday, that I'm going to remove the dad bod that I have now, which is really, I don't. Not really a dad body. I still got some muscles because I I try to stay active in the gym. But if I'm quite honest, I haven't been that active. I have not. I've I've you know I've been I've slipped. I have not been as dedicated and as diligent when it comes to working out and being physically in shape. This is something that I used to live and do religiously. I would 
wake up and the first thing that I'll do is go to the gym. Or if I had to work that day, right after work, straight to the gym, man, I was in the best shape of my life. I Anybody that knows me that knows that I was a beast at the gym. But two years ago, I hurt my shoulder, hurt my elbow. And every time that I went back to the gym, I would re-aggravate it. And when I would re-aggravate it, I would take another week or two, sometimes three weeks, sometimes even a month off, and then try to go back to the gym, and it'll be the same thing. And because of that, I, I lost, you know, the six pack that I had, or maybe a four pack rather. Um, I, I lost some of the muscles that I had. I remember my wife told me the other day, because she's happy because I, 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 I went back starting last Monday, I guess you can say, back to the gym. I've been as more consistent as I've ever been. You know, it's only been about a week and a half, but it's, I've been, been dedicated to it. And she says like, Hey, you know, I, I, I love, um, super dad, but I miss Superman, those muscles. So, um, I, I'm, I'm back at it, but not to get off topic and sorry for kind of getting off topic, but this will happen sometimes even with our prayer life. This is sometimes what happens when it comes to our relationship with God, where we start to scale back or because of something that has happened, a hurt or a pain, whether if it's church hurt or somebody that we know that, that has offended us, or it could even be just like what happened with Israel um, during that time with Moses, where they felt that God had not delivered them, even though God delivered them from Egypt, but God did not deliver them the way that they wanted the things that they were asking and, and, and wanted. And what they, I guess their expectation did not live up to what they thought it was going to be, which was obviously a false narrative that they created in their mind. And they forgot what God had released them from the bondage of Pharaoh. And sometimes that happens to even to us where we forget the power of God and what God is trying to do and how he has rescued us from sin, but we fall back into it. And that sin becomes a lifestyle that we start living this carnal life that we're like, man, I cannot get out of this. I don't know how to get out of it. And sometimes we allow shame, which is coming from Satan, shame to get into our mind. And we start to turn our backs on God. We stop living or sometimes even refuse to live the life that God has called us to live. And this is where it requires deliverance. This is where it requires Fastings, because sometimes what happens is there's a demonic spirit that gets attached to you and you don't realize it. There's so much that goes on in, in the spiritual realm that we do not see, nor even sometimes understand. But when we're close with God and we have a relationship with God and we're walking in God and we're in tune with God, what happens is we start to understand the battles that are being fought every single day in the spiritual realm. There are things that God will reveal to us. Sometimes in our dreams or he'll just speak to us in this calm, still voice and let us know what's going on, what we need to be aware of, what we need to to um, be prepared for. I know there's been, especially, and I've talked about this many times in this podcast, I've had within the last, I would say three to four years or so, and never really been a dream, but it's like I'm becoming more and I'm understanding that God speaks to us in many different ways. And one of the ways he speaks to me is through dreams. And I've been having a lot more dreams more frequently where God is speaking to me or he's showing me something. And one of the reasons why is because the way I have dedicated my life back to him, the way I've been living my life, again, doesn't mean I'm perfect. Again, I sin every single day just like anybody else. But one thing that I do, which is what I recommend, and, and one of the reasons part of this episode is that I pray. Um, I take time to fast when I need to fast because what it does, it heightens up our spirit. We become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, especially during a fast. We become more sensitive because what we do is we, when we're fasting, we're denying ourselves with something and replacing it with God. We're replacing it with being more in tune and more aligned, like in an alignment with the God that we serve. So our spirit, our Holy Spirit, this Holy Spirit that lives inside of us becomes, we become more sensitive to it. So now we could 
hear God a little bit more clearly. We could understand revelations that God has given us more clearly. We become more hungry for the word. Yeah, we're hungry for, for some food. Don't get me wrong. If it's a fast that requires where you're not eating um, for a certain period of time, um, there's a hunger, but you're replacing the hunger or how to feed that hunger with something else. Instead of solid food, you're replacing it with the food of knowledge, which is the word of God. And the Bible talks about fasting a lot. We know one of the more famous stories when it comes to fasting is Jesus. And a lot of times when God requires us to fast and he tells us to fast and he gives us the instructions on how we're supposed to fast is, is one reason is to help us get prepared for something big that he has for us. And it requires that discipline. So it requires us to shed our flesh and die off of our flesh so we can just really live through the Holy Spirit, though the Holy Spirit is already inside of us. But there's always a battle between our flesh and the spirit, right? And so if, if, if we go into Mark 1, verse 12 to 15, it says, the spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals and angels and took care of him. Later on, after John was arrested, speaking of John the Baptist, Jesus went to uh, into Galilee where he preached the good news. The time promised by God has come at last. He announced the kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. This is Mark chapter one, verse 12 through 15. And so here is, is a quick breakdown of Jesus fasting. He, he ended up fasting for 40 days, 40 nights. We know the story that he got tempted by Satan during the time of his fast because Satan was trying to remove him out of that fast. And this is what Satan's going to do to you whenever you decide to fast. So, so let's say it's like, hey, you know what? I want to fast because I'm tired of seeing the generational curse that occurs in my family. I'm tired of seeing me struggling um, from pornography, from alcohol, from whatever it is. Um, there's, there's this temptation that you know that is bad from you. There's, there's this temptation that you are struggling with and it's like no matter what you do, you can't get out of. And sometimes while you're fasting, sorry about that, um, while you're fasting, you're like, hey, I cannot get out of this or not fasting, I'm sorry, praying. Sometimes it requires a form of deliverance. And one of the best ways to get delivered is through a fast. And so you you go into this fast and you're like, okay, God, I need this. And then what happens is when you start to fast and you stick to that fast, you see God with that fast, you're going to see a transformation. You're going to see a, a level. You're going to see a deliverance that's going to take place. You're going to be delivered for whatever it is that you've been struggling with let's say it's unforgiveness bitterness that's in your heart and it's like i don't know why i cannot it's very difficult for me to forgive people i can't do it i hold grudges that requires deliverance there's many different ways there's many different things that we as believers need to be delivered from and sometimes we think it's just small but we don't realize what it does and what it harvests. And again, just like with Numbers 14 chapter, I mean, Numbers chapter 14, verse 18 states is that we will, as let's say parents, those who are parents or just in general, the sins that we commit, the fourth, the third and fourth generation is going to pay for it. They're going to inherit it. We want to, and we want to, we want our kids, we want the next generation to inherit peace, wealth, and prosperity, the goodness of God. We don't want them to inherit pain and, and, and dysfunction and abuse and lust and all these things that what it, all it does is keeps us in bondage and destroys our life. Again, sin is expensive. You can choose your sin, but you can't choose your consequences. And that's why it's it's so important. And, and fasting is one of the best ways to be able to do it. There's so many different fasts out there. There's a Daniel fast. 
Again, I just talked about the the fast that Jesus did. There's so many different fasts that you can fast that you can do. And, and I would recommend so you can know what fast you should do is go to God. Go to God and say, God, I want to fast this season. What type of fast that I should do? I did a fast early this year. Every year I always start the year with a fast. And and to be honest, I'm going to go into another fast um, next week. And it's for different reasons. But the fast that I did beginning of the year, I did a 21 day fast and it was a 21 day fast where I, there was no social media. So I removed all distractions. The only thing that I was, able, I was allowed to do was go on YouTube and really just to watch catch up on my sports. Cause I'm a big sports person. Um, and just news. That was it. There was no social media. So there was no Instagram. There was no Facebook. There was no TikTok, Snapchat, Anything that was considered social media outside of YouTube, I don't know if YouTube is really considered social media, but anything outside of that, I did not do. And that fast also included for me was to really expand my prayer time, expand my prayer time. So I, I prayed a lot in the morning. I started studying and reading the word. Anytime I got tempted to pick up my phone and go on Instagram, what I would do is there's a Bible a Bible quiz and I would just go to it is a Bible quiz app and I would go to that Bible quiz app and I would just go in there and start just um, it just asks you random questions and I would just do that. So basically what I did was I replaced what would distract me from the Lord and 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 re I replaced that with me doing things that would keep me in line and in tune with the Lord because it was something that God required me to do for that season. But here's a beautiful part about it. Once I was done with that fast. So I didn't have to do a food fast because what God wanted me to do that fast, it, he wanted me to cleanse off things that was a distraction. That's really what that fast was for. And so once that fast was done, the things that I was fast from became a lifestyle. I no longer, though I do go on social media now, really more for this podcast and I have my own personal page. But I saw that when I went back in social media, things that pages that I would follow, people that I would follow, I realized I didn't want to follow no more. There was like almost like this, this taste. And I'm not saying that they're distasteful pages, but it did not align with what God needed me to focus on this season. And so that was something that was amazing for me. I could feel this, me being renewed after this fast. I, I can feel myself being more aligned with the will of God. And, and, and I've, and I've done a good job for the most part, um, after that to, to maintain that again, we all fall short every single day, but there's a level of submission that has increased in my life when it comes to the will of God, all from that fast. And so when you're getting ready to fast, you're looking to fast or something or because of something that you've been struggling with, or maybe you you want to fast because like, Hey, I need a new job. The job that I'm working at right now, it's not cutting it. I'm tired of my boss. I feel like I'm not elevating. I feel like I'm not growing. I'm going to fast. Go ahead and go to God and, and ask God, Hey, I want to fast because of this. I want to fast because I need a new job. How should I fast? And God would instruct you. And if it's his will, what he's going to do, he's going to, bless you with a new job once you complete that fast. And sometimes it may not even require a fast. Sometimes it could require a simple prayer. You just need to know what the difference is on when you should fast or when you just need to pray. But it starts off with prayer. And obviously when you're fasting, you're praying as well while you're fasting. You should be praying because again, prayer is the best way um, besides reading the Bible to be in tune with God to spend time with God because we can make time for everything else. Happy hour brunch on Saturdays or Sundays, um, parties, going to sports, sporting events, whatever it is, we can make time for the things that we want, but we should never neglect making time for God. That should always be our priority. It should always be on the top of the list. Should be number one on the list to be, to be exact, to be, to be honest is and the reason why is God sets everything up for our day. I know when I make God a priority, the first thing in the morning, 
I have the best days. I don't stress. I don't worry. I don't feel off. There's no anxiety. There is nothing. But if I forget to pray and I'm going out throughout my day and I'm like, man, I've got to pray. And I look back at that morning. I can see there's a difference. I can see there's a change in my mood. But when I pray, I just feel more whole. I feel more pure, even though fleshly I'm dirty, but spiritually I'm clean because the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. And and, and, and I'm, I'm sticking to being guided by that. So prayer sets the foundation off of that. And so does fasting. Fasting is one of the best ways and one of the best things that you can do. Start your year with a fast. You can go throughout the year during a fast. Sometimes the season change. I know some people who fast every single month. They start the month off fasting. But most importantly, if you're looking at your life and you're seeing like, hey, I need some serious deliverance. Nothing seems to be working. Though I'm saved. But don't, don't get it twisted. You know, once you are saved, you're saved. God is there with you. He's walking. He's walking with you. But there are certain things that require some deliverance from because we still battle with our flesh. And sometimes as believers, one of the mistakes that we make, we think just because we're saved that we're not going to be attacked. We think because we're saved that we don't need deliverance. And there are things that we do need to be delivered from because there's so many demonic spirits that's always on t- always on the attack. And they always want to attach themselves to you, especially when they can see a weakness or entry point that they can get in and they could align themselves with and attach themselves to you. And then now they're hooked on you because they're always looking for a host. They're always looking for a home. Because what do you think unforgiveness is? What do you think when you're when you're seeing rebellion? What do you think when you're seeing um, lust and an increase of lust where you cannot control the lust that's in your body. It's a demonic spirit. It's, it is a demonic spirit that, that, that lives there, that is there. And when you're trying to fast and try to get it out of you, it's going to do everything in its power to distract you. There's a powerful testimony that I've watched. Me, me and my wife watched this. I watched it first in December and then I rewatched it again with my wife um, last week, and it's a powerful testimony with the apostle James Koali or Koala. If I pronounce his name incorrectly, I do do apologize. But it's I, I, I'll leave a link below. Me and my wife, we could actually do it, a full episode on it because it's so so much gems. Man, it's gonna it will open up your mind if you haven't watched it. And those who are familiar with it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I highly recommend every believer, even non-believers, to watch it because it's going to shift and change the way you look at spiritual warfare and the attacks of Satan, how Satan, he's, it shows you how he is the God of this world and how he used different people to, to, get, to, get his, to get his way and his will with people and how to really divide people from God and destroy Try to do everything he can to try to destroy God's kingdom. But we know there's victory with the Lord. So I definitely highly, highly recommend you guys watching it. But that testimony is it's just incredible. It really, really, really is. So I'll drop a link down below for those who are interested to go ahead and watch it. But yeah, I just wanted this to, um, with this episode, to be kind of like a follow-up to Last week's episode, Sin is Expensive. If you haven't watched that episode, I definitely recommend you watching this episode or watching that episode as well. I believe that you really will get something out of it. But I want to do a follow-up episode, which was this episode on fasting and prayer, especially when, especially when it comes to how to be delivered from sin, how to be delivered from our iniquities, how to be delivered from, from our transgressions, the things that we struggle with every single day or generationally that we need to do. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And until the next episode, as always, one love.